Welcome, creatures of all shapes and sizes, to Banged Up with Bruce Oldham, aka The Kid. This is an action sports podcast, the likes of which the world may never have seen before and may never see again. I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, should I like spin around on my chair like this? Dope. Quarter spin. All right. Welcome to today's podcast. Today's guest is none other than Patrick Lindsay. He's a good friend of mine. We go way back. Um, huge skier. And today we talk about his uh, career coming up as a young skier. And he's a person that's been plagued with injuries. So we go into his injuries and uh, basically what happened to him and talk some shit and have some fun together. It's a good time. Good time catching up. And young Patty's moving in with me. So he'll be... Uh, He'll be around tons and tons in the next two to three months. So stay tuned. It's an awesome podcast. Uh, we get into it, talk some shit, have some fun, and uh, go over some um, skiing highlights and unhighlights. So yeah, enjoy. So since you're our first guest on, this is your test guest, okay? So you're kind of like the beauty pageant of the podcast. Uh, we're gonna see I if like we can it. keep. Yeah, we're gonna see if the screen recording works to keep your face on the screen the whole time. I put it up in the episode. You can look good as you always do. Yeah, I look good. I haven't shaved in like a week. No, I was gonna say you look a little greasy, but uh, I got a bunch of questions here, and I guess we'll just talk shit and see what happens. Uh, worst case, right. I'll get the audio recorded, and if the screen doesn't record, we'll just say fuck the screen. But yeah, and then. Both of us are on AIDS Wi-Fi, so hopefully this works. No, I'm actually balling out in the data for this. I'm booing data. Oh shit! Eh? Yeah, well, I got. You're rolling in unlimited data these days, or you're not. I'm totally rolling in unlimited data these days. But if we break, if we break that 10 gig barrier, though, the data goes down to the straight cancer Wi-Fi data. After that, all right, Pat. Well, it's good to have you on the podcast, big guy. Um, You're moving in with me and the kid uh, in what, like, literally five days. So that's gonna be exciting. Five days. Yeah. If you guys are, if you guys watch the uh, vlogs or anything like that at all. There'll be tons of uh, dope content with this young buck here coming up. His beautiful I face will be. Anymore, but... Our beautiful faces will be blessing your feed. All right, well, mm-hmm. Pat. Uh, kind of the first thing I wanted to bring up is uh, it's exciting to have you moving in, first of all. But uh, I want to talk about basically your story to date. So, Big Patty, lead the way. Well, tell tell us a little bit about Patrick Lindsay. So you grew up in Arm Prior. Arm Prior no, is. No, no. White Lake. White Lake. White Lake. Arm Prior. Prior. A little bit scummy. I'm pr- White Lake's got a bit more class, you know. White Lake's got uh, more class than Armpire. Okay. Basically, my my family's pretty uh, well known right here. My grandfather made a name for himself. Lots of businesses, land owning, stuff like that. So, growing up, didn't have really internet, TV, or anything, but had free range dirt bikes. You know, you'd hunt, boat, whatever you want to do. Uh, raced dirt bikes for a while, which I mean, that was fun, but it, to be honest, it was terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> I was more interested in go-karting and stuff when I was younger, but it just got to be too expensive. Like, to do that is a ridiculous amount of money. Yeah, and then you got into um, skiing as well. Like, you're obviously, I, I met you through skiing. We're good skiing friends, but how did yeah. you get into that? Well, I was snowboarding. Um, could not figure out how to make it work whatsoever. Uh, like, I was could do a three, but, I mean, I've been doing it for two years, and I'd worked up to a three. Broke my wrist. Sucked. Um, and then I remember... I broke a binding and I had these garage sale Solomon Fishers, like those white ones with the orange in them. Yeah. And I was at Saint Sever in Quebec and I tried those on and managed to do some threes. I could hit boxes and stuff. Decided to do that full time the following year. And uh, I kept getting pestered by Ryan Wheatum, who used to be the Armada rep for Ontario, uh, to join. He used to coach Calabogie freestyle team. Yeah. So I joined that. Um, the airbag was very big for me, actually. I, I Growing up, we had a trampoline and used to jump in the lake and all sorts of stuff, so I could always do flips. Uh, in terms of skiing, I was always better at jumps over rails anyway. Um, but, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, the airbag, Mark andre Tarp is the, uh, he owns airbag. Acrobag, I believe, is the business, the official business name. Um, yeah, but he came to circuit around, like, Calabogie, Edelweiss, Fortune, Cascade. He did it two years in a row and got to know him pretty well and went to all the stops, which was huge. Got, like, developed an air sense pretty quick. So I kind of jumped from Calabogie to NCR to provincial team in, like, three years. Yeah, because um, you got really good at skiing real quick. I hadn't skied until grade nine. And then grade yeah. 11, I was on the provincial team. Yeah, you're like me. Like, I didn't start skiing till like, first year high school, grade yeah. 10. Yeah, same thing. And you moved on pretty quick. And yeah, 
like basically obviously for you and me skiing is kind of just like a fucking huck fest we're pretty much known for just launching meat and stuff like that we are uh, exactly. big participants of the ranch as we like to it, call it, it looks like that but at the same time if you look back at all the hours spent on tramp and ramps you never really lose where you are in yeah the air. it's a calculated it's a calculated wrench we uh we both exactly. have we have good air awareness so we don't usually land in our heads but we do like to put Most ourselves... Most of the time, if you're trying something ridiculous, you'll land and you'll die doing a cork seven when you just yeah. something went wrong. <laughs> yeah. And, all, and um, skiing obviously filled that kind of gap for you where you just like, like to send, because I know you personally now, these guys don't, but like you do a lot of dumb shit in general, like a lot of stupid, sandy have. dumb shit. Like there's there's a couple Motorcycles, of... Motorcycles, snowmobiles, all that stuff. Yeah, I'll see how far, how fast, how big you can jump them. All drift cars on the lake, whatever. jumping off 100-foot bridges. All that Not stuff. a lot scares me. Uh, snakes really are the only thing that scare me. So yeah. that kind of opens up options to do a lot of dumb stuff <laughs> with dumb, lack of fear. Dumb stuff that don't involve snakes. All right. Well, yeah. anyways, tons of crazy shit as a kid growing up. Kind of like me. Kind of like most kids that get into skiing. Um, yeah. Coming up and competing as a young skier, you're definitely very dedicated. I remember first year meeting you on the team. You were always the first one in bed. You were always the first one... Uh, you're always the one getting like good sleep, stretching, doing all that stuff properly, and taking it really seriously. But you did like to have your own fun, do your own little things. So, what's the craziest uh, story from one of our ski trips or your ski trips before I was on the team that you can think of to date? Because we did a lot of like I I don't want to underrate this at all, is but it we did. Candid? Is it allowed to be straight? <laughs> yeah, you're uh, we're allowed. The, the podcast is open, so we're allowed to say whatever we want whenever we want. Like. New we're Zealand, we're young skiers. Far, the highlight skiers. of the entire everything I did with skiing New Zealand was the highlight for sure. First year on the team, so there was still some guys like Ontario team used to be set up OPPT OPPA. So back when we started, there was NCR, which was the National Capital Region, and then S uh, SOR Southern Ontario Region. So you get to those regional teams. That's kind of how you got pulled up, and from there you go to OPPT, which was coached by Saxon Giddings. And then OPPA, which was Pat Walsh. So, kind of moved your way up. Um, yeah, so, but at the time, we stayed at the Purple Cow Hostel in Lake Wanaka. Yep. And we had pretty well two teams of nine. So, there would have been 18 guys from Ontario, plus the BC guys. So, like, Patty Dew was there. Uh, Tyson was there. Olan. There's a bunch of dude, like guys there for sure. So, we'd always all, like tramp together. We'd see each other at the gym and at the hill. But one night, I remember we were out drinking on the beach at, like, a, I guess it was a, just a playground. And you got to kind of envision, like, 30 underage kids, very belligerent at a park. Yeah, <laughs> and, I, I can uh, imagine. And that ends up, ends up, police come. And I remember everyone just scattered and, like, everyone sprinting down the beach. And you could see another cop car coming to cut everybody off. I think a, a good chunk of them got stopped, but I, I, I ended up making it back to the hostel. And our coach was there, and then I just kind of remember looking at him being like, y- yeah, you can talk to somebody else. <laughs> just kind of avoided that, but that was definitely a fun night for sure. Yeah. Kelly Lavier didn't, didn't pan out very well that evening. No. For, we, I mean, I was going to say that's a pretty tame story for all those things that I personally have been through with you and we've been through on the team together. But I like it. We'll keep it somewhat respectable on the podcast. Yeah, uh, we don't yeah, want to you know, throw... let them into all the secrets just yet. No, we can't. We can't throw anybody under the bus that hard this early yeah. on in the this early on in the series. We'll wait till we have a few more uh, listeners, and then we'll get some more of the OG uh, mm-hmm. OG ski crew out and throw some more people under the bus and tell some real for stories. Sure. All right. Well, I remember one time me and you were we were in Quebec for uh, the last contest of the year, and we were looking around for Pat, and we couldn't find him anywhere. And you had gone and climbed to, to the top of a cell tower that was probably like three hundred feet in the air at the top of a ski hill, just by yourself. What, yeah. what what drives you to do shit like that? I don't really know. I was I think basically I was trying to I remember correctly that was the step up tour at Little Lake. Yeah. In like two thousand and sixteen. And I remember I was trying to do the a uh, run. I was trying to do right uh, I was doing left fork nine blunt to so switch right ten like lead stale. Yeah. And then I think I was doing switch two back four the other way switch two super allen to two prex two on like the old like OG stair set at Lure on the middle rail. Yeah, the classic. And I one. basically could do it every time except every time I messed something up in the rail line. And I just couldn't figure it out. And I basically had been through because I got there day one, figured out my run. Day two, landed everything and then tried to start linking it up, but couldn't do it. 
So I just wanted to kind of get some fresh air. So I basically ran up the Stoneham, went for a run up the hill, got to the top, was going to come back down. I was like, oh, there's a nice nice tower here I could climb up. Figured I might be able to see Quebec City. So climbed up to the top and it was very nice up there, I must say. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, as you and I know, your life is full of dumb shit. And I know there's going to be tons more coming this summer. And we're actually gonna go and do stuff on like last summer. We're gonna we're gonna throw some throw some shade, do some carnage, um, but this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be an interesting question for you, young Patty. So yeah. we're gonna we're gonna throw some shade on your uh, ski career. So basically, your ski career got cut a little bit short, and yeah. you were doing very very well for for your competing that season and going into the next year. And you're a guy that's been plagued with injuries. Un- and like like I said, skiing's in one of those things that shit happens and people get fucked up. Yeah. But I think it would be uh, kind of cool if you talked about all your injuries with all these people on the podcast. And a lot of these guys get injured and they get super bummed out and they don't keep going. And you're somebody who's, who's been through it all. So like, tell like, them your story. Let them know what you think. And uh, Yeah, for sure. Well, I- I'll kind of go back to kind of where I left off when I was talking about how things started for me. I, I used to be coached by Saxon Gettings. Ran yeah. into him. He's from Ottawa. Me too. Um, I ran into him at Junior Nationals when I was on the Calabogie team still. Coached me on NCR. Coached me on my first year um, of uh, OPT. So we were very close. Um, I was full of ADHD and he used to spend all his time disciplining me. But eventually we kind of became friends and you know had a good relationship. And he knew that, like, when you're on a ski team, you'll have athletes who are like, no, I don't want to do it because they're late. I don't know why. They're pussies. But I would ne- I would never say no. Like, if he, he used to try and he used to always have to rein me back. So he'd be like, I want to do doubles. He'd be like, no. He wouldn't let me do doubles a whole season because he wanted my singles to be good. Yeah. So, but that changed the game for me because I could do any direction, like switch, straight, left, right, anything up to a 10 with pretty well any grab. Yeah. And I could play with my axes because I spent so much time doing it. So if he, if I said no to him, because I'm like, no, I'm not doing that, there was a reason. Whether it was weather or I had equipment malfunction, he wouldn't question it. So then when I moved up to OPPA, I didn't really had a lot of injuries. Um, I toned both rotator cuffs and both shoulders, Which separate is injuries. kind of minor in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, it, it basically takes you out for a month. You yeah. got to kind of rest it for a week and a half, two weeks, and then slowly start. To, if you go too fast, you'll make it a lot worse. Um, I dislocated both thumbs trying to ski half pipes to Copper Mountain Rev Tour. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> other, than, other than that, though, I wasn't really injured, all things considered, too badly. I hadn't had any real issues. Um, and then basically got on to uh, OPPA, new coach change. Pat Walsh, he was a good coach, just we hadn't really built up a relationship with each other where he understood kind of where things were going. Um, I was happy I was able to do doubles. Like I basically, when we were ramping, I was doing right and left dub 10 and 12s. I had switch doubles pretty well on lock on bag. Um, I was working on switch dub 12s and stuff as well. Um, and then basically, you know, all, our season starts in May, ramping. Then you go to, you go either go to WIS, like Momentum, or Ramp some more. Mm-hmm. Um, but we had kind of made it to Parisher in August, and I remember, basically the best way to explain it is you, you, you have all these good days in the summer, because the only time you really can't ramp is if it's a thunderstorm. Yeah. So, yeah, and when you qualify tricks, you do it on Tramp, then you do it on Ramp, then you do it on Snow. So you end up with a list of stuff you have qualified on Ramp and Tramp. And you don't get a lot of good days for jumping a lot of times on snow. So I was doing, finishing up qualies on dub 10, I believe, dub 10, 12. And uh, I was following uh, Christian Stormguard and Rylan Evans was behind me. We were at the bottom jump at Front Valley at Perisher. And I I didn't want to do doubles. I had told Pat no, like 15 times. But eventually he's like, just do some setups. We'll see how it works. So it's basically just doing a big hips up Cork 7 like progression. And they had changed the jump for a snowboard competition. It used to be the faster you went, the higher you went. Now, if you went fast, you were pretty well aft at that point. Um, so I remember kind of coming over the second jump, which was like a channel gap. Yeah, basically. Well, quick quick pause. One. I was there that day, and uh, I hit that channel gap second run of the day, and I went because it was so windy, right? 
Yeah, oh, Tailwinds yeah. were unbelievable. And I hit that channel gap, and I went dead flat and just called it a day and stopped skiing after that. And I saw you guys keep going, and then obviously... Cont- we had managed to kind of keep it okay in the top, too. The thing you got to kind of... It's kind of hard to explain, but the, the front valley part, the hill's kind of mellow, and then it drops kind of off, and the last jump is almost built on flat. Yeah. So you you know you have a tailwind on the top two jumps. But when you're riding into that bottom jump, you have, like, shelter from the knuckle of jump two because it's so high. Yeah, so you so, can't tell. Exactly. So we had went a little big on jump two, but we were like, all right, it's fine, whatever. We are coming in, and I remember following Christian, and he was probably not – we don't – leave that much of a gap whenever we train into jump so he might have been like 30 feet ahead of me and i distinctively remember hearing pat walsh yell stretch which is a no-no which means he's going too fast and right around that point i had started to feel like my my weight was lifted from the tailwind because it was that strong and uh, i set up the t-set and basically it was just kind of one of those things where it all slowed down I could hear Pat yelling stretch at Christian. I could hear Pat yelling stretch at me. And I basically just kind of it went silent for a second. And I, if you've done a cork seven, you'll know exactly the point when you roll around and you see the knuckle. Yeah. Except the knuckle was like 20 feet below where it was supposed to be and about 30 feet behind. So it was just one of those oh fuck moments. And uh, basically just opened up as big as I could. To this day, still don't know how I landed on my feet. Um, because I had like two seconds more airtime than you normally have on a jump, which is like yeah. two years when it comes to something like that. Um, gapped the whole landing on a 65-foot table, which is about 100 feet. Yeah. Landed completely flat from about 60 to 80 feet. Broke both my heels, blew both my ACL, MCL, and meniscus. Yeah, you really you really did yourself in. I was there for that. And like, <laughs> yeah. And I'll firsthand, uh, I'll collaborate to this story. You went like a solid 100-plus feet in distance to flat and you went probably 60, 80 feet in the air. As soon as I flat. took off, I could just, the air just kept like picking me up. Like it yeah. was like somebody had stepped on the gas. Like it was the worst feeling yeah. in the world. Um, yeah, I basically I got, I tried, Pat said, Oh, you just bruised your heels. I tried to stand up. I crawled, first off, I crawled off the landing cause I didn't want to get hit, you know, park etiquette. You can't yeah. stand in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, park etiquette is key. Um, and then basically Christian Stormguard didn't go quite as big as me, but he rolled his seven to a nine. So he was able, like, if you're overshooting a jump and you land switch, it's way better than forwards. Yeah. If you're not playing, it's the other way around. You want to be forwards. But he caught, like, the last bit of tranny switch. Kind of, like, was, bit, like, bruised or whatever, but wasn't severely hurt. Uh, he piggybacked me down, got taken to the hospital, had x-rays. Yeah, broken heels. Cast it. Didn't know at the time about the knees, really. Um, so, yeah, basically from there. That was a long road. It took two years. Yeah, you took and you recovered well, and you came back and you did ski. Yeah, well, like I, I actually came back in the Yukon in November of that yeah, year. It was I remember two and that. a half months. I remember I was doing right dub fourteens on ramps like two months later from my heels because it was just hairline fractures in the heels. It wasn't that bad. Um, yeah. I think the one they they didn't even put me out. They did like a small surgery on the one to check like a chipped bone or something, but they literally just froze it and did it. But I didn't know about the knees, so. Basically, I ramped. Um, I had knee pain in one knee, so I just brace on it anyway, not like a full ACL or anything. Um, but yeah, and then I went to the Yukon, and then I believe I was in Breck that year yep. afterwards. And I just kind of fell off a rail early on a two on Rayfed, and I got MRIs. And yeah, that's kind of when I found out like that they were both blown fully. And then from that point on, it was a full like that was 2016 to 2018 when I was. Yeah, and that kind of put your ski career on hold. And, I mean, last year, me and you lived together when we went to school. I mean, unfortunately, yeah. I dropped out, obviously, because, you know, the kid. But, um... You, Still skiing, though. Yeah, we went skiing, like, almost every single day, every single night at Mount St. Louis, and we had tons of fun. And, like, you obviously... I, mean, it was, I honestly enjoyed it more. Like, when I was skiing on the team, it was so much fun. Mm-hmm. But, like, you gotta be... You're there to win. Like, I was there to win. Like, yeah. not that I didn't want to like i enjoyed myself for sure but like i was i was at the gym six days a week i trampoline i had a trampoline in my backyard two and a half hours a day literally just progressions yeah yeah two piece three piece one piece whatever for doubles um but then whenever i quit like not that you're not trying to make friends and stuff but like when you're in the mindset of competition if you're really competitive somebody's good they you won't get along well, for instance, me, me and you are, like, best friends now. We literally didn't even hang out till like, probably 
two and a half years ago when uh, randomly I, we, I met you at the ski hill at Mount St. Louis again and we started yeah. hanging out like and just yeah. became best friends after. But when we first met on the ski team, me and you did not like each other. We did not get along no, at all. Because- definitely not. Like my mentality was just different. Like I was there. And I, part of the reason I remember is because like you used to do dub 10 like screamings and 12s and screaming. And stuff. I always wanted to mess around on ramps, but I was not allowed. So yeah. just getting to see everybody else get to do it would just piss you off yeah. so much. And I was but, also yeah. I was also super competitive, and you were also super competitive. So we're kind of like yeah. both gunning yeah. for that spot. But obviously, you were definitely way ahead of me back then. And at the time, yeah, yeah, not and anymore. Then, but, you had yeah. a little series of, of unfortunate events, which is the way it goes. But anyway, exactly. When we ended up meeting up, I just I remember though your mentality changes after stuff like yeah. that. You kind of just fact check. Like I wanted to ski at that point, and it was like I didn't want to go back to a system where everyone's dub tens look the same and i got to do this all the oh time my like, God, i man. just <laughs> want to ski so when you get back you're just so happy to be there and you, you're so happy to ski with everyone that it totally changes your perspective on yeah. things it's kind of where i am now i've had to have another knee surgery since we are time we're talking about yeah, now you, i actually you got me last year yeah, I, I was actually working at Mount St. Louis as park staff, and I hit like a death cookie with my boots undone, skied down the hill. And I had already, the, the, basically my one knee surgery didn't heal properly. The muscle, the way the bone screw went in, something went wrong. Yeah. Anyway, so I had to have another one, another knee surgery, which was May of last year. So I actually, I didn't do much skiing this year being in Ottawa. I was in BC for two weeks in Revy and kicking course, but other than that, yeah. Yeah, so basically three knee surgeries. Uh, two heels, yep. couple other injuries along the way, couple concussions for sure. Concussions for sure. Uh, yeah, bit, bit my tongue in half at momentum one time. Yeah, Fought multiple chipped teeth. Yeah, one dedicated ass skier. Anyways, you got a business degree under your belt. You're a smart yeah. turkey. You got a lot of plans. You're very ambitious. You're very much an entrepreneur. So if anybody wants to work with this kid, uh, hit him up. But what's yeah. uh, what's next of the what's next for you? Because the world is your oyster, and you got uh, knowing you, you're going to be doing some big things. So. What's well, next on the plan? Basically, my plan. I, I've spent six months, like, me, well, me and Bruce, put it kind of back a little bit. We used to work for these wealthy guys as caretakers in the summer. So being out, being active. At the end of the summer, you're so burnt out. Yeah. You kind of just forget what you're doing. So I was like, at the end of last summer, with my knees, when I was just like, I don't want to do this anymore. So I got a job working for like DRP, Bombardier Recreational Products, like Skidoo, Sea Doo, stuff like that. Yep. Um, which I liked, but I don't want to work a desk job. I, I definitely love business, but if I'm going to be doing something in business that involves me working behind a desk, I'm going to be working for myself yeah. or I'll be in like one of the owners of the business, so to speak. So I, I definitely am going to keep, uh, keep on like looking for something. I'm always looking for something to do in business. I've got something kind of in the works right now in terms of the aviation industry with some friends. Um, but, uh, at the moment, immediate plans, I'm going back to work for the summer, get outside again. Um, and then I'm going to hopefully get into firefighting, get my firefighting, uh, seals and stuff. And then I want to do wildfires, what I'm thinking yeah. for, for the next few years, a lot of traveling, being outdoors, stuff like that. And you know, those guys are crazy guys. So I'd like to be a yeah. part of that crew for sure. Well, I mean, you're moving in with me and we got a lot of dumb shit planned. First of all, I'm going to make a yeah. uh, pack with you right now on the podcast so we can't get it broken, but We've been talking about getting our uh, skydiving license every year, and we've just been too broke to do it. But I think this is the year that it has to happen with the uh, quarantine uh, Trudeau money. We yeah. might just have to put the Trudeau money to uh, towards the skydiving Trudeau license. Trudeau dollars. <laughs> Trudeau dollars. It's on the list. It's been on the list for two years. I've been skydiving more than once, but at this point, I just want my license. The motorcycle licenses have came. The other shit has came, but we haven't got around to the skydiving license, and that's something that's exactly. definitely on the list. Uh, you're I know, and I'm getting closer to the pilot's license. I want the pilot's license now, so i got to get the scouting license before I get there. I've been dreaming about a paramotor, so if anybody wants to donate to a paramotor uh, or help me and Pat get towards our dreams of paramotor and flight, flighting, flying? Pilots, flying. I'll come flying take pilots. care of the I just want a paramotor. He wants a plane, but... Uh, if you guys want to help out, don't be afraid to subscribe and give the podcast a good like. Uh, that was our first guest, Mr. Patty Young. I hope you guys enjoyed, and... Uh, We'll catch you with the next guest. And now the outro. Anyways, um, that was our podcast with Patrick Lindsay. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was kind of the first guest we've had on other than my sister. So I don't, I don't count her as a guest. But um, basically, like I said before in the previous podcast, this podcast is taking a huge shift towards guests and interview styles. I personally enjoy it more. I'm sure you guys enjoy it more.
rather than me just spewing nonsense. Uh, it gets a little boring after a while. But yeah, we have tons of sick guests, and we're going to bring them all into uh, into the podcast. I have uh, some big ski pages lined up. I have a bunch of cool guests, uh, pro skaters, pro skiers, boarders, all that other stuff. And yeah, it's going to be sweet. So stay tuned for the next episode of the podcast. I believe our next guest is Maddie Bolt. So, so take a look if you want to look into her before the podcast. But that will be coming next Tuesday. Podcasts every Tuesday. So stay tuned. And uh, cheers from the kid to you guys. Mwah.